Our second scene features Mr. Carter and Ms. Rhodes. <laughs> it's entitled Privacy. Scene. Usually I have this delivered to my house, but dang. You want to explain this? Well, it's a newspaper and uh, black and white and red all over. I work for one. This one, as a matter of fact. Is that cleared up for you? I want to know where you got the story. Sorry, my sources are confidential. That's great. Some liar gets confidentiality and my life is all over this rag? Hey, you chose a profession that puts you in the public spotlight. So we know you know that, so don't blame me if you can't handle the consequences. Oh, I can handle the public eye. What's aberrant is spreading bald-faced lies. Obviously your job. Everything I wrote is truth, as far as I know. Well, you don't know anything, and that's the truth. Fine then, enlighten me. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I had to rely on other sources for my story instead of you. What are you talking about? When I first heard about this, I tried to get in touch with you to talk about it. I never got a call from you. Well, then talk to your publicist. I called her and she said that you had no comment or too busy to talk. So I was left to my own devices. When was this? A week or two ago. First off, I had no comment because I never heard any rumors about this. And secondly, I was too busy. I was filming a movie and I told my publicist I didn't want to do anything until we wrapped. I had a job to do. Is that so difficult to understand? Not at all, but understand that I also have a job to do. I cover the entertainment scene. So I guess we both did what we had to do. Except my job is make-believe. I don't try and pass off innuendo, hearsay, and appearance as the truth. I also wouldn't hurt an innocent bystander. Hey, I'm not the one running on my spouse in public. Neither am I. Oh yeah? That's what I was told by my sources. Oh yeah, your confidential sources. Just for your information, that poor little production assistant you hired to give you information off the set made a mistake and shot off his mouth from what he told us before he was fired, was that you were just looking for some harmless little gossip items. Nobody would be hurt. What was that? Just a little harmless white lie? Yeah, well. Well, nothing. That kid will probably never work again. So there's another notch for your gun. You know what's amazing? When you're all starting out as struggling actors, you beg for publicity. You have no idea what I've been offered by actors, agents, managers, publicists, just to get your names in the paper. Then, when the few of you do make it big, you turn around and spit on us for giving you exactly the same thing. I call you all schizophrenic, but hypocritical says it better. Okay, got a point, but when does it stop? What part of my life is off limits? I have to say, none. Suppose asking for a retraction is out of the question. Tell me why. What's going on is nobody's business but mine. Sorry, that's not good enough. Okay. I'll tell you my reasons, but this conversation is off the record. If my reasons are valid to you, then print a retraction without details. Just say you were wrong. If not, at least don't follow up on the story. I'm asking this as a favor. You've never given me trouble before. Okay, deal. I suppose you want to know who the man at the school is. That would be a good place to start. Well, he's my brother. What? <laughs> <laughs> It's not that, it's just that in my business, introducing someone as your brother is the same as introducing me as your nephew. Okay, I see where you're at, but that person is my brother. And why didn't you introduce him to anyone? Why did you sneak him into your dressing room and lock the door? Your sources were good. I wasn't sneaking anyone. Just wanted some privacy. Why? He's a doctor. Are you sick? No. And who? My husband. I, I'm sorry. He doesn't want me to stop working because there's nothing I can really do. Um, he can't really come to the studio, so when that happens, my brother and I would meet up and he would fill me in. I understand. Um, he's doing okay, but um, he has his rough days. We're determined to beat this. 
There's a lot of people out there who would give me support. I know, and I appreciate it, but... But what? I've always tried to keep my family out of the spotlight. This is not about me, and we have to deal with this on our own. Is that so difficult to understand? No, it's not. You know, you could say this has both a lot of trouble by telling me this in the first place. You have a point, but like you said, I'm a public figure. How much of my information can I trust anyone with? I get your point. I'll come to attraction. My husband will appreciate it. I am sorry. You know, I think you are. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. The next monologue comes to us from Ms. Brickner, and it's entitled Crumbling Beauty. Put on my best clothes and go out and live. Thank you. 